excited. It's an honor uh, not only to be nominated for such a prestigious award, but to be amongst people who are giving so much to our community. You know, all in one space coming together to celebrate each other, but also to celebrate the city of Milwaukee. Uh, well, you get a lot of awards and None here like the ones from home, from the people you represent, the people you support, people you work with, and people you care about most. So, so it's a humbled honor. You know, you, when you think about the work that you do, you do it for the community, but to be recognized by your own, who's seen you grow up from the trenches, from 53206, through the public school system to where I am today, it is, it is an honor. It was amazing to be back home, uh, be able to bring the trophy back, and uh, to have this event, be able to get a war and celebrate uh, with people from the community and uh, give people their flowers. It was an amazing day. Nobody does it better than the Ronnie Rebels, and we're excited about all of the great things that they got going on in the world of agriculture, things are growing in our city. Running Rebels is a part of that. Incredible. Um, now I'm planning next year, like, all right, what I want to do for the city next year, so. I'm a, I got some. I got some brainstorming to do. Good evening, everybody. Now you look too good to be that quiet. Good evening, everybody. If you could make your way to your seats, we're going to get started on this fantastic, lovely, lovely evening. I want to welcome everybody to the, can you say first annual, first Unity Black Excellence Awards. Tonight is all about celebrating us. Give yourselves a hand. This is about black excellence and unity. So this is uh, powered by 300 Strong, and I just want to talk a little bit about 300 Strong. 300 Strong is not an entity, it's really a movement. And it's a movement that promotes unity through collaboration, demonstrating the collective impact that local initiatives working together can have on the overall health and well-being of our community. So this is what it's about. So in a day and age where there's so much tearing us apart, pitting us against each other, tonight is about coming together, together and celebrating each other. So, so many awardees and honorees tonight that we are going to honor. And it's about honoring this and celebrating the accomplishments of individuals who are really living that mission of 300 Strong. So please welcome, help me in welcoming our beautiful hostess for the evening, Miss Nisha Gadsden. All right, y'all. So first of all, I got a couple of things I want to say. Um, as beautiful Dawn said, my name is Nisha Gatson. I am born and raised here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So first of all, we've got to just give it up for that because that was I didn't, like, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel the energy. So one more time, give it up for just being from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's it. That's it. That's it. And I'll tell you this, so I, again, born and raised here, there's my mom right there, shout out to my mom. Um, I went to five elementary schools here. Uh, we were on the move. And um, I went to Morris Middle School. I went to Riverside um, High School for my first year. Then I graduated from Vincent High School. Anybody, Any, is there anybody who graduated from Vincent? No one, all right, just me, okay. Just, okay, just your kids, all right, shout out to your kids. Um, and then I actually moved on to Chicago for, for undergrad and grad school, and I now live in Maryland. But I will tell you this, and I was talking to our esteemed mayor, and I told him this as well. Everywhere I go, I say, I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Nobody asks me, I just tell them that I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, because I am super proud to be from here. Um, you know, I think COVID just took so much time from us, right? And so I wasn't able to get back, to, back here as much as I wanted to. So this is special to me, to just simply be here and be amongst so many family and friends. And even if I don't know you, your family tonight, all right? So um, just act like y'all know me, okay? Um, but this event is special. It is so special because today we get to honor so many people here and pillars that are from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that are working hard to make Milwaukee great, right? And we know that it takes a village. It's not an easy thing to do. And I know that we turn on the news and we get 
discouraged sometimes, right? There's a lot of heaviness going on in Milwaukee, but I want you to know it's not just Milwaukee. That's happening in our world. It's happening in our world. And so we could focus on that, but we could also focus on the great things that are happening here and the great folks that are making things happen. And this event brought to you by 300 Strong and Running Rebels that I hope will continue year after year after year that will acknowledge all of the hard work and efforts. And, and I hope to see many of you come up here at some point to receive awards because we can all do our part, right? And so I want to get started because we have some really, really awesome honorees, and we got a lot of them. And I know many of you are here to see your people, right, and, and support them. And so I want to make sure I get to them. Our first honoree is the mayor of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mr. Cavalier Johnson. Uh, yes, please give it up for him. Please give it up for him. I had the esteemed pleasure of uh, speaking with him in the back. And just when I tell you, as real as it gets, just a joy to talk to. Um, he and I shared something in common, and that is that we both went to several different schools. Apparently, we had, we, he also had. Uh, parents on the move as well. And so uh, we share that and we got a chance to laugh about it. And we, what we realized is it, it built character at the end of the day. So let me just tell you a little bit about your mayor. Um, I'm sure you know everything about him already, but if you don't know, let me let you know who he is. Mayor Cavalier Johnson took office uh, as acting mayor of the, the city of Milwaukee in late 2021. And he set out immediately to build a safer city. He has prioritized violence reduction, economic development, and roadway safety. Before taking his role as acting mayor, Johnson served as common council president while representing the city's second automatic district. In April of 2022, Mayor Johnson was elected as the 45th chief executive of the city of Milwaukee, winning more than 70% of the vote. Hello. I mean. I mean, he didn't just win, right? He won one, okay? Um, he is the first black mayor elected in the city of Milwaukee. Did you all hear me? The first black mayor elected in the city of Milwaukee, which just gives me chills when I think about it, and only the fourth elected mayor in the past 62 years the fourth elected mayor in the last 62 years, so huge. His commitment to public service began early. Um, he is a graduate of Bayview High School. So I don't know if Bayview, because Vincent wasn't really representing. Is Bayview representing? Okay. Um, all two of you, all two of you from Bayview. All right, this, we gotta get some other schools represented here. Um, and then he also is a graduate of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Represent? Oh, okay. That was at least 10 of you all, so that was great. That was really good. Um, and before his, his election as alderman, he served as a, as, as a staff assistant in the mayor's office where he worked with community and faith leaders to find creative solutions to pressing issues facing families. So he's deeply committed to the community, having served on boards of the Milwaukee YMCA, ACLU, Wisconsin, and Milwaukee Community Brainstorming Conference. He lives in this city with his wife, Dominique. They have one son and twin daughters. I want you all, if you don't mind, to give it up for our esteemed mayor, Mr. Cavalier Johnson. We want a safer, a stronger, more prosperous Milwaukee. I also said this city is wonderful, it's beautiful, it's sometimes heartbreaking. And I said we needed to have a big, bold vision. I said we needed to stand up for one another. And now, today, tonight, this city, for the first time in our 176 year history, has elected its first black mayor. We did it! Yeah, yeah, 
We just gotta keep a focus. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, wow, everybody, you look great tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. Uh, you really, as 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 mayor, I get the chance to go all over the city and uh, to interact with people all across Milwaukee. And uh, I can tell you that when I come into this room tonight and I see the diversity reflected in this room tonight and honoring the folks that were honoring, not me, but honoring the folks uh, who are doing great work in Milwaukee to make our city stronger, more prosperous, safer. Um, you know, it's amazing. And you guys are really showing up and you look great doing it as we honor those people who are working to make this city the best that it possibly can be. You know, I'm, I'm honored to be here to have uh, received an award uh, tonight amongst so many other distinguished uh, award recipients who I'm sure you'll get the chance to hear from and hear about as the night progresses. But uh, look, I, I, I simply wanted to, to, to take the mic to, to thank uh, the organizers, namely uh, Don, uh, Victor Barnett, and so many others that uh, are working to honor people who are working to make Milwaukee a better place day in and day out for people all across this city, which is the most important thing for us to do. All of us have to keep that in mind. This is our city. It's our city. And the challenges that we face, they are not insurmountable. They're not. But it takes all of us, each and every single one of us, working together in partnership in order to solve them. That's exactly what I'm committed to doing as mayor. I know that there are so many other folks in this room who are committed to doing that as well. And together, We'll get it done. We'll get it done for this city that each and every single one of us loves. All right, thank you very much. Safer, a stronger, more prosperous Milwaukee. Wow. Just give it up for Mayor Cavalier Johnson one more time. Uh, that just gave me chills. I, I just, I really couldn't be prouder. And um, I mean, that's a real big deal. And and just, he is, um, he's just amazing. So. Next up, our next award recipient, who I also was talking to in the back, uh, and he just, just a great, great, great guy. Um, we, <laughs> um, one of the things that I found out about um, County Executive David Crowley is that him and uh, Mayor Cavalier Johnson actually have some similarities. Like, it's crazy. Like, going through, just reading about each one of them, they both graduated from Bayview High School um, with the other two of you. Um, they, um, they both, you know, kind of moved around the city a lot. And so, you know, what I, what I realized in talking to the both of them is just greatness begets greatness, right? And, um, they're both on a mission together. And what I told them is that I'm proud of the both of them. It's not easy work that they're doing, but it's, it's necessary work, right? And so we need to rally around them and support them and lift them up and pray for them because it is not, it's not easy, but they're doing it. And so I want to introduce you all to David Crowley. As a lifelong Milwaukee resident, County Executive David Crowley knows, as well as anyone, that Milwaukee County is truly a tale of two counties. He has lived the pain and struggle that many of our communities face every single day. And he knows the joy of bringing people together to conquer those struggles. The fundamental tenet of Executive Crowley's administration is to build bridges to bring people together, and not walls that keep them apart. David was mo motivated by public service, uh, servants around him to forge his own path in elected service and was chosen by the 60,000 citizens of the 17th uh, Assembly District to represent them in the Wisconsin State Legislature in Madison. Uh, in two terms in that assembly, David uh, sat on the Energy and Utilities, State Affairs, Workforce Development, and Transportation Committees, and was the ranking member of the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee. He served as the chair of the Milwaukee delegation, the chair of the Black Caucus, and the co-chair of the Milwaukee, or the Black and Latino Caucus. Uh, he also served on the boards of directors of the, both the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority and the Outreach Community Health Centers. Whew, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> David is a member of numerous community organizations, including the ACLU, Milwaukee Urban League, Young Professionals, and the Milwaukee NAACP. As I mentioned, he attended what high school? Thank you. Um, UWM, um, and currently lives in Milwaukee with his wife, Erica, and his three young 
daughters. He was elected to serve as Milwaukee County Executive on April 7, 2020, and was sworn in on May 4, 2020. If you all can join me in giving it up for the amazing County Executive David Crowley. Milwaukee County was founded in 1835. David Crowley is the first African American elected to lead it. Not just the symbolism, but the responsibility that comes with being the first is something I'm very keenly aware of. We're going to open a new office of special projects and grants to find every possible dollar we can from governments, the private sector, and foundations to help pay for the work that needs to be done. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. We will give voice to those who can't speak for themselves. We will remove barriers and lift the burdens of those seeking a life of dignity. And Milwaukee County will no longer be on the list of one of the most segregated communities in America. Hey. For everybody who was on our side, thank you. I always got to give honor to God. Um, my family, my mother, all the people who have who, who, who have literally poured into me uh, to be where I am today. It's, so it's truly an honor. Uh, so it's, it's humbling to stand before you. But first and foremost, I just want to say congratulations to all the award recipients. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Mayor Johnson. We got an NBA world champion, Kevon Looney. We got the talented Jacob Lattimore. Among countless of other community leaders all across this community who have been doing great things, let's make sure that we continue to give them rounds of applause. But, you know, they gave me a, a generous amount of time to speak, so I'm going to use it. Um, and, and, and really, I want to talk about the importance of history and about the appreciation of those who have literally paved the way that we all journey on today. And I believe that excellence is literally a byproduct of a commitment to perfection. It's a personal commitment. It's a community commitment. It's an organizational commitment. And it is striving for that possibility that we can meet perfection. But of course, we all know that no one, no one thing in life is perfect. But excellence is that aspiration, that tireless, undying effort. And so when we think about it, throughout history, Milwaukee has produced a long list of luminaries committed to perfection. And they are literally shining examples of ex excellence throughout this community. And just to name a few, I'm talking about folks like Vail Phillips. I'm talking about folks like Marshall Cox. I'm talking about folks like Dr. Howard Fuller, Dr. Lester Carter, right? Hank Aaron. If you think about it, black excellence is in the DNA of Milwaukee. It is in the DNA of Milwaukee. But we, we should all know that that comes with great responsibility. Not only to demonstrate the same level of commitment, but to carry on their stories of those who came before us. To paint that picture to our daughters, to our sons, to our nephews and nieces, to our community, to our neighbors. But we must do the work. And there's a lot of work ahead of us, y'all. But let's not, let's not forget the stories that came before us. And to frame it, not only for our generations, but for future generations, what it means, but more importantly, why we did it. And to those future generations, many of you are here, to all the younger people in our lives and throughout our community, we need to make sure that they know that they have a path to excellence. They need to know that they have a path to excellence. And we have to speak it into their minds. We have to speak it into their lives and into their existence. Now, when you think about all those trailblazers, and even the individuals that we're recognizing this evening, that did not eliminate challenge for black excellence. And it didn't make us or you immune to the, to the struggle that we see every day. But that struggle is what we should be using as our fire to continue to deliver black excellence. And I, and I hope when I talk about my own story that I, you can see that through my experience I am living proof that we can become black excellence. I've been evicted three times, y'all. My family struggled with mental health and drug addiction, yet you got two kids from Bayview High School running both the city and the county.
But before I close, I do want to say, I want to commend the work of many of the organizations that helped put this event together. When you think about 300 plus strong, when you think about running Rebels and everybody else, y'all have been doing amazing work. And when you think about in government, in business, in community organizing, there's a catchphrase that everybody always hear, and that is how can we collaborate? And I think that's something that we always need to talk about, but I personally feel like that's not the question. I think the question is how do we coordinate? We need to coordinate. Because words without action is simply that. And action is what our communities need right now in order to get over this struggle, in order to change the systems, but more importantly, also to change the thinking. And so I want to thank all the organizations, because I believe that you don't just collaborate. You have been coordinated. So I want to always make sure I shout out both Victor and Dawn for the work that they have been doing for so many years in this community. You are a beacon of hope for so many folks. And I just want to say thank you for not only for what you have done for me, but thank you for what you're continuously doing for the community. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. God bless you all. All right. Give it up for County Exec, David Crowley. I like what he said. He said you got to collaborate and coordinate. He reminded me of, um, was that Friday? You got to coordinate. No, was that Boomerang? Was that Friday? Was it both of them? You got to coordinate. You, okay, you know. Um, but I love that. All right, so we want to keep the show going. Now, listen, this next awardee, I got to read his bio because I read it, and I was like, he, I'm, he's literally like, seven years old and he's done so many different things and so let me just tell you about him and then we can bring him up. Assembly Assistant Democrat Leader Kaylin R. Hayworth II represents Wisconsin sensational 16th Assembly District. He is the youngest African American to, to ever be elected into the state office in Wisconsin's history. Did you all hear that? The youngest. History and potentially the nation. He is also the youngest and the first black to hold the title of the Assembly Assistant Democrat Leader. While in office in the legisla legislature, Representative Hayward, Haywood serves on five assembly committees, housing and real estate, ranking members, small business subcommittee on education and economic development, co-chair, committee on assembly organization, committee on rules, joint committee on legislative organization, and tourism. Y'all, I, I read this and I had to stop because this young man literally is like 24 years old and he's doing all of this. And so I need a nap already for him. Um, and so we're going to talk about that, sir, because I don't even understand how you're doing all this, but it is exceptional. He is a Milwaukee native and a business student at Car Cardinal Stretch University. Shout out, my mom went there. Um, Representative Hay Haywood serves as chair of the city of Milwaukee Restorative uh, Justice Advisory Board. He is a dedicated member of his district with experience in community organization and empowerment. At the refreshing young age of 24, 23. You're not even 24 yet? I mean, just rub it in. Rub it in while I'm just he has shared his vision for Greater Milwaukee on both local and national media outlets. He works tirelessly to change the narrative of the possible achievements of young people with the hopes to inspire them, his peers, and let them know that the time is now. You don't have to wait to be great. Y'all, I mean, Kaylin, I want you to come up here and get your award. Because Do you sleep? How many hours do you get? Like, just right. give me a rundown because you were seven and a half years old doing all of this amazing work, and I just want some detail, okay? Give it to me now. Well, them 15-minute naps, they hit a little different lately. So, yeah, I get my naps in. Um, so, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. It feels good to be here with y'all. Uh, I want to say thank you to the organizers and the 300 Strong and all the folks who 
put in the work to make tonight happen because I think it's important that we have these nights because when you look out and you look on the media or social media, you hear these negative things about what's happening in Milwaukee. You hear these negative things about what's happening in black Milwaukee. But in reality, there's so, so, so much happening, positive, productive. We have greatness here in Milwaukee. We have greatness that comes here from Milwaukee. So when I ran for office in 2018, the goal was to do something that had not been done yet. To get elected at 19. You know, I turned, my birthday was at during the campaign. But since then, I have gotten awards or honors for my work and getting it done. But for me, this award hits a little different because it's from the people who I go to Madison and I fight for. It's for the people who I go to Madison and represent and give a voice to. It's for the people I fight day in and day out for. So for me, it's really, really special to be here. Tonight's award is also not an award. I never accept an award with just it being an award only. Kayleen did great. Sometimes, depending on the award, it's a, it's a, it's a service contract of I'm going to keep doing the work and keep doing the great stuff. But tonight is a signal of hope for all of us. This is, this, is what, this is what happens when we as a community wrap our hands around each other and we support each other as a village. It's when we work together as a team, we achieve greatness. So tonight shows that. And, you know, rather I'm in the Capitol fighting for resources for the city, rather I'm talking to a resident at Johnson Park, I have the same goal in the forefront of my mind each and every day. It's to push the needle when it comes to equity and fairness. So I'll end by saying this. This is to my young people and to my elders. Regardless of what or who it may be up against you, may doubt you. Find something to stand for. Believe in yourself. And never give up on that goal until you become great. Can we do that? Thank you. All right. All right, let's give it up one more time for Kaylin. All right, so... Our takeaway is the 15-minute naps, okay? We can do all that, but we need a 15-minute nap. That's, that's the takeaway. Thank you so much, Kaylin. I'm really inspired by him because I think when we think about our young people, right, and having an, an example, I mean, he just told you all, 18, 19 years old, I mean, he's 23 years old and really, really doing the work, right? We're, ne we're never too young um, to, to do the work. And so um, I'm inspired by him. I read his bio a couple times, and I just felt like, I might need to be doing more stuff, all right? Like, like he put some pressure on me because he's just working so hard, um, so young. So first of all, I need to do a check-in because we've got another honoree, but how, how are we feeling? Yeah. Are we still present? I mean, I feel like there's some people that are upset that they didn't get to shout out their high school. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to go ahead and shout out your high school really quick. Let's go. Lincoln? Oh, okay. Is Lincoln still around? No? It's, it's gone? It's gone? Okay, Lincoln, class of... Oh, you won't tell me. All right, class of something. All right, Lincoln is representing any other high schools? Hamilton. Any Hamiltonians in here? All right. It's about four of you. Um, what other schools? Anybody else? Marshall. Is anybody here from Marshall? All right, all right. There's a there's about seven of you here. Okay, Riverside. Okay, oh, just just the bar, just the bartender. Um, Pulaski. Is Pulaski here? Just just my beautiful friend right here. Anybody else? Go on once. Say it, say it again. Rufus King. Okay, that's more of you. Tech. Tech, is Tech here? Okay, this, all right, there's four of you. I mean, I don't know where everybody went. Anybody else? Did we get them all? Some arts kids. There's some arts kids. Anybody go to an art school? No? All right, well, that went over well. All right, next up, we have David Muhammad, all right? David Muhammad is the deputy. Yeah, give him a round of applause. Come on, David. David Muhammad is the Deputy Director of the Department of Health and Human Services for the Milwaukee County. 
David is a deeply committed community leader who has dedicated his career to improving the quality of life for families and young people in the community. At DHHS, he has worked to advance racial equity in contracting efforts and youth justice innovation strategies. Before joining Milwaukee County, he served as the program manager for the city of Milwaukee Health Department's Office of Violence and Prevention. His important work has had a lasting impact on community health and public safety. Now, he's a lot in his bio, but I want to get him up here because he has just done some amazing thing, things. He holds a BA in history from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Madison, Madison also representing again, and was a member of the Latino nonprofit leadership class at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. You all give it up for our friend, Mr. David Muhammad. So if I, I give, uh, as others have done, first the honor and glory to God uh, for, you know, sending his prophets and the truth that they gave us, because that's my guide. And I, I can't uh, stand up here and not say thank you to the community and to Running Rebels for the work that Running Rebels has done. And whenever I come before a group of people, I always say uh, peace and say it in Arabic, alaikum for those that know that. Uh, but I have to shout out Running Rebels because they are about that life. They do the real work. And there's so many people here tonight that I'm looking at. This is a, a, a crowd full of luminaries. So, you know, I, I'm serious. I see, you know, Anthony McHenry, who was a brother I looked up to. And I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you when I was working at the Silver Spring Neighborhood Center and Andre Lee Ellis and other people. And then people like Ray Nitty and Vaughn Mays and... <laughs> You know, I think yeah, we can hit the air horn for them. Uh, but <laughs> and you all look beautiful. But I have to say that the most beautiful thing is to see Dawn and Vic and give them a round of applause. Because, you know, running rebels is a family. And when you're in that family, you're a rebel for life. And I never worked at the rebels, but I work with the rebels. And I just uh, thank God for Milwaukee and the Running Rebels and the work that you all do. Make some noise for them and for yourselves and for everybody here tonight. All right. Okay, sure. All right, we got to get some photos. Give it up one more time for David Muhammad. And I also think we should give it up one more time for Don and for Victor Barnett, for Ward, all everybody who's contributed to this beautiful evening. I just, I feel the love, I feel the energy of everybody supporting each other and that is just, you know, it's necessary. So next up, I'm really excited about this award recipient because this is our first lady of the evening. And so I think it's important for the ladies to represent as well. This is Tara Martin, who is currently with the Running Rebels community organization as the assistant director of target monitoring program and coordinator for the program known as the MCAP, Milwaukee County Accountability Program. She is also the president of the Wisconsin Juvenile Deten De Detention Association. That's a tongue twister. Tara is a substance abuse counselor and training enrolled Tara is a substance abuse uh, counselor in training enrolled in the Alverno College Social Work Program. Tara enjoys finding ways to allow youth to express themselves in a judgment-free environment and sharing life experiences and lessons that will hopefully inspire them to become positive people in the community. Tara, this is my favorite part, she was born and raised in the 53201 I mean, 206 zip code. Anybody else repping uh, 53206? Because it's a... You guys as well? All right. 53206 represent. Uh, she is the mother of a beautiful 11-year-old daughter. 
and she's just doing extraordinary things. And she says, I enjoy working with youth, hearing their reasons why they make some of the choices in their lives, and then challenging them on some of their beliefs to see if they consider changing some of their ideas um, that will positively impact their lives. So she's an ins inspiration to me. I love to see amazing women doing amazing things. So y'all give it up for Tara Martin. Good evening. I want to start off by thanking everyone that's here, but um, I want to send a special thanks out to my family that's right here, my uncle, my auntie, my mom, my dads, my cousins, my friends. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to the MCAP team in the back. I cannot do this without them. Um, we do some of the toughest work in this city. A lot of youth that we work with, people will not want to even go into the communities, but we're there every single day, day in, day out, different times of the night. And we wouldn't change that because we believe in these youth. And if we take and put in everything that we put in our own children and we put it in these youth that may not have everything that we grew up with or just give them some type of hope, just hope within our community, we believe that we'll change the community in the city of Milwaukee and we'll be a better community as one. Thank you. Yes. For us to cross paths, God yes. said, show desires you right. can Give it up for Tara Martin. I had to find it in this young So proud. I love her family in the back. They were like, it is not Tara, it is Tara. Y'all, get me together. Okay, get me together. It is fine. It is fine. Get me together. I don't mind. Congratulations again, Tara. All right. So this next honoree, I got to just take a second. Uh, I know him. I've known him for a really long time. He's very, very dear to me, very special to me. I, years ago in this city, I, I was a part of the Miss Juneteenth pageant. And there was this amazing man who was at the helm of it all. And the life that he spoke into us early, because I don't know, I mean, I was maybe, what, 13? 13. 13 years old, and I didn't always see what other people saw in me. But to have this gentleman pour in, into you and just pour so much life into you and tell you that you're exceptional and that there's nothing you can't do and you can achieve all things and you're gonna be great when you didn't know that you were going to be great. I am just, I still get emotional thinking um, about how much he poured into me. And so years later, and I say, I mean, many years later, I won't tell you how old I am because that's not y'all business, okay? Um, <laughs> but years later, I still have an affinity for him and to see him still giving and giving to the city. And I know sometimes he gets tired. I know sometimes he gets tired, but he doesn't stop the work because it's in him. It's in him. There's a legacy in him that is strong, that is rich, that is abundant. And I, you know, I check Facebook a lot and I see his name pop up and things that he's doing and I just smile because the work still continues years later and I'm so proud of him. So. I want to introduce you all to the incomparable Andre Lee Ellis, who is the founder. I'm not done. I'm not done. He is the founder and executive director of the newly established Andre Lee Ellis and Company, Inc. Community Theater, featuring uh, Cage Community Agricultural Growing Experiences. He's the original founder of We Got This, Inc. Community Garden. He has worked countless years in the community, organizing and developing uh, in Milwaukee and development in Milwaukee with more uh, than just so many years in the theater community as well. He's the founder and, exe and executive artistic director of the Andre Lee Ellis and Company Theater, Inc. Mr. Ellis is a writer, director, actor, and instructor with many credits to his name. His greatest accomplishment is being married to the beautiful Angela Ellis and the father and grandfather to, the one, to his wonderful children and grandchildren. He would like to thank the Running Rebels for the honor, and I will let him come up and do it. 41 years of service is an awesome accomplishment. Give it up for my friend, Mr. Andre D. Yeah, Ellis. Yeah. We just got to keep a focus, keep a focus. Everybody taking notice, get a notice. Screaming Black Lives Matter, yeah, we in now. 
I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I lie. Eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. For I too am America. I was seven years old when my mother taught me that poem by Langston Hughes. Ninth Street Elementary School and children that looked like me teased me for being so black. I came home crying and she stopped me and gave me that poem. I've been saying it ever since. I'm proud to say I'm at the table. I no longer eat in the kitchen. I'm a chef. <laughs> I want to give honor to God. I have to thank my twin, Victor Barnett. A lot of people don't know it, but tomorrow, tomorrow, Victor and I, will. I'm telling Victor, we both will celebrate 62 years of living. Our birthdays are the exact same month, day, and year. Nisha Gatson is a jewel in my life. I know her family. I know her mom and everything. Hey, Shirley. I'm proud of you. I'm happy that you never stopped. I knew when you were 13, 14 years old, not only were you beautiful and articulate, but you were ready. All you needed was just a little more time. I'm not going to take long because I'm not one of those elected officials that were allotted a lot of time. And, and I was looking at the time that everybody else took, but it's beautiful. Let me say this to you all. Be unafraid to take the reign of, of moving forward. This is one of the most wonderful summers we've had, even with the problems. I'm very upset about the domestic violence and, and the shootings, but I'm excited that we can get in, get together in droves of hundreds and not have one negative incident happen and the news not really talk about that. But from the porch to the festivals, to the theater festivals, we've been getting together in hundreds and not one negative incident happened. You all stop, shut, stop falling for the okie doke. I heard Tara talk about the youth, but I heard George Benson say it years ago in a song, The Greatest Love of All. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. If we just take those first few words and run with it, stop all of the fake love. Give credit where credit is due. It may not be you today, but just like cars, it's Ford this year, but if you're a Chevrolet, your year might be the next one. Be unafraid to love. That's what we need. And if you stop, it all probably will. All right, give it up for Andre Lee Ellis and happy early birthday to you and the extraordinary Mr. Victor Barnett as well. How we doing? How we doing? Yeah, oh, that's, you're my girl. Just, I just want you to know that. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say I have a favorite, but if anybody asks me, it's you, okay? It is, it is you. Um, all right, let's keep the party going. So our next award recipient, um, he is somebody who is also pretty special to me. Uh, I've known him for years. I used to host a talk show here called Team Forum years ago. I don't want to age myself. If some of you may know about it, some of you may not, but it was, it was on television here. And there was this guy who just allowed us access at the radio station. And he allowed us the opportunity to just come in and interview all the celebrities that would come to town. And um, he just made space for us. And we were so young. I started hosting that show at 12, 13 years old um, and continued on until I left to go to college. And there was an ex just a, an amazing guy by the name of Reggie Smooth as Butter Brown. Uh, who made space for not just me, but so many other people to have access. And our show um, just got, we got a chance to meet so many people, and, and Reggie was a part of that, and so I'm so grateful for him. But his first job in radio was working at WYMS Milwaukee, which stood for Your Milwaukee Schools. 
He was a board operator for various uh, ethnic shows, plus he read the daily newspaper to the blind on a sub-channel. Growing up, he was a music whiz. I would say he still is. In 10th grade, a teacher at his school, Riverside High School. Okay, Riverside, There's, you've got another one. Um, <laughs> asked him if he could DJ at their homecoming dance, and he said yes. And using his father's home stereo system, he pulled it off. Other schools heard about him, and the rest was history. Today, Reggie is the program director and afternoon drive personality at iHeart Media in Milwaukee. And there is not a national recording artist that is not familiar with him. His smile is infectious. His love for the city of Milwaukee shows in everything that he does. He elevates local talent, encourages and motivates the youth of the community, and is simply a legend in our community. I want you all to give it up for Mr. Reggie Smooth as Butter Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just gotta keep a focus, keep a focus. Everybody taking notice, yeah, they notice. Screaming Black Lives Matter, yeah, we in now. We united, standing tall, we ain't falling down. Yeah, you see this black skin, I'm a wear proud. If it's in the Thank y'all for coming out. God bless. Good night. No, seriously, Andre Lee Ellis stole my speech. He did. I wrote all that down and said, what you think, Andre? But me too, I believe our children are the future. And uh, first and foremost, give it up for yourselves for being out tonight. <laughs> Nisha, that was too much. I told them to just say Reggie Brown from V100. Boom. But uh, I want to send a big shout out to Milwaukee Public Schools. MPS, make some noise, come on. Riverside, where you at? Marshall, where you at? All right. So there was a gentleman by the name of, uh, well, coming up on the east side of Milwaukee, I used to listen to radio, WAWA. Anybody listen to Dr. Bob? O.C. White? Steve Hagwood? Okay, well, um, I used to listen to Dr. Bob. He was rapping before rap existed. I'm a chick chasing a money waster. From Whitefish Bay to Cudahy. Woo, man. I used to want to be that dude. Y'all remember Powell's Gift Shop? I used to go to Powell's Gift Shop. I used to catch the bus, go to Powell's Gift Shop, and watch him do his thing at a live remote. And Mr. Powell would say, man, you got to buy something to stay in the store. Give me one incent. One incent. And I couldn't take it home because my mama wouldn't let me have incense. But I used to want to be this guy so bad. Um, some of my idols I listened to on the radio uh, when I was in eighth, ninth grade. And then I started doing parties. And she was right. I was doing parties with my daddy's stuff. The stereo system we had at home, I would take it out and do some parties. Just little backyard garage parties for the neighborhood. And there was this gentleman by the name of Mr. Outlaw. He was my counselor at Riverside. He said, MPS has a program where if you have a B average, you can go to another school and learn the trade that you want to get into. Uh, Washington was computers. My dentist, Dr. Timlin Boyd, she went to North of uh, Division. That was a school for dentistry. But Marshall was for broadcasting. So in my junior, senior year, I struggled with that B average. But I held on, and I went to Marshall in the morning, Riverside in the afternoon. And there were two gentlemen there, Mr. K and Mr. Holmes, that had faith in me. And they got me jobs working for MPS, um, Milwaukee Public Schools, WYMS, the school board. And um, I just knew that that was the way I wanted to go. And so when I went to college, they were teaching me the same thing in college that I learned at Marshall. And I was like, no, this ain't it, this ain't it. So I got out of college. And look at me now. I'm here in Milwaukee. I used to be, I used to make tapes for people, recording songs off the radio. So I would record, a, you would tell me the songs you want 
I would listen to the radio till that song came on. And then at the end of that song, I would stop it before the DJ would talk. And then I would come on. Yeah, that was cool in the game. Yeah, that was me. That was my mixtape. But uh, I perfected the craft later on. And man, I just want to say before I get up out of here, thank you to Milwaukee Public Schools for making me who I am. This radio journey has been crazy. I'm trying to hang. I got a club tonight, as a matter of fact. But um, at, people ask me, why am I in the clubs? It's so dangerous. Why are you in the clubs? Because like a boxer, like a basketball player, you got to stay in shape. You got to know what's going on. You got to know your surroundings. And um, I know my surroundings. I, I stay in the game. I don't, well, I don't need the money. Well, my family needs the money. My kids and grandkids, they do. Papa, can you buy me this new bike? Okay. But um, I just like being in the clubs, knowing what's going on, knowing my surroundings. And like Brother Muhammad said, I want to give it up to Vic and the Running Rebels because they helped my little brother growing up. Vic, thank you, man. I love you, brother. Ward, I love you, brother. Thank you so much. And um, thank you for honoring me tonight. I was supposed to have been in Chicago. I could have got, it's not about money tonight. Money don't matter tonight. And that's from Prince, one of my favorite artists. He said money don't matter tonight. And tonight's not about money. It's about what's in your soul and what you do for your community and for your people. So I could have been making triple the money that I'm making now in Chicago. In 2018, I got offered to go back to Chicago to station 104.3 Jams, make triple the money, but I'm right here at home. And I'm telling you now, my next big job will be a skating rink in Milwaukee. I remember the palace. We need a skating rink right here in Milwaukee. Greenfield, Butler, Racine, they could. But we need a family event right here. And that's my next job. So thank you. God bless. I love you. Shout out to Craig, Mr. B, who owns the place. Jeff, Frenchie, everybody. All right, give it up for Reggie Brown. Everybody taking notice. All right. All right, let's keep the party going. This young lady, Tia Cannon, was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and is the mother of two beautiful girls. Tia is the president and CEO of ANC Real Estate, a residential construction and real estate consulting firm, is one of few. Um, if not only female-owned, operated construction companies in the state of Wisconsin, all right? Uh, she's also the uh, founder of a nonprofit organization that supports felons, former, current, former and current inmates, and their families. ANC Foundation hosts several community events, like the Butterfly Experience, an empowerment conference for women and youth to help build relationships between young girls and women, Along with back to school, Christmas, and food drives, T is a part of the Scott Crawford development team, which they currently are developing a 197-unit mixed-use uh, commercial and residential housing complex called, um, called the Community Within the Corridor. Ms. Cannon is largely recognized in the community for helping others identify their passion while helping them establish their own legacy. You all, I want you to give it up for the beautiful Miss Tia Cannon. <laughs> Strong. Yeah, yeah, we just gotta keep a focus, keep a focus. Everybody taking notice, yeah, they notice. Screaming Black Lives Matter, yeah, we in now. We united, standing tall, we ain't falling down. Yeah, you see this black skin, I'm a wear Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. I'm so excited and honored to be here. Just want to thank Running Rebels, want to thank Ward. Um, the work that I do is not for me, it's for everybody. And so we want to just continue to do the work. Congratulations to the other recipients and thank you guys. Give it up for Tia, she's beautiful. I love her dress. Tia, you can, you can just drop that dress off. I'll take it. It's fine. I'll give you something else to wear because I'll take that home with me. I appreciate that. All right. Next up. Okay. We got a few more. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. All right. So next up, we have 
community activist, Mr. Vaughn Mays. He's an activist, a music artist, a violence interrupter, and a mentor, a father of three, and Milwaukee native. Vaughn attributes his step into Milwaukee's fight for criminal, social, and racial justice to examples set by Mr. Victor Barnett and Andre Lee Ellis. Uh, starting as a background protester and supporter of families of police injustice, Vaughn has since elevated to leading, organizing, managing, and creating programs and initiatives in violence pre prevention, mentoring community patrols, and domestic violence intervention, community-led first response teams, which includes projects in Wisconsin and several other states. He is uh, very revered and, and, and very hardworking and one of the most consistent activists around. You all give it up for Mr. Vaughn Mays. I need to see that award again. I, I want to make sure that award don't say Tory Lowe, because I don't know why people think I'm Tory Lowe. Um, for both real though, let me express my gratitude um, to Don and Vic, first of all, um, to all of 300 Strong, to Andre Lee Ellis, as was, as was said, um, for extending their platforms and support to people like me. Um, I represent the everyday young black man uh, with a record who wants to do better and more for myself and my city. Um, people need to know that it is possible to carve out your own path your own way. Um, those who are closest to the problems are usually closest to the solutions and I am a product of that. Um, that being said, I also don't want none of y'all to get mad at me when I do what I do, because activists gonna activate. So. <laughs> um, lastly, for real, um, I am proud um, of all the calls of Milwaukeeans, especially as of late, including this. Um, people been calling for Von Mays days, awards, all these different things. Um, but this is only the beginning. Um, we all still have so much work left to do. We have a city to turn around. We have our youth to save. We have our women to protect. I sincerely hope that you all know that my only agenda is that. That is my only goal. So I hope as we all accept these awards, we all accept the responsibility of our roles and titles to answer those calls of those most hurt and harmed in our city. So thank you, Vic and Dawn. All right, give it up for Vaughn Mays. I love, love, love music. And there are some songs from Milwaukee that I literally listen to a lot. And it's funny because my husband came to Milwaukee once for a family member's wedding. And Bao came on at the reception. And the way we all ran to the dance floor, my husband is from the Bronx, New York. He was like, what is happening? What is this song? And I was like, oh, you're about to find out. And we danced like it was nobody's business. And I, he saw another side of me. I, that's probably why we got married, actually. Um, and I mean, I'm just saying. And so since I've been here the last couple of days, everywhere I've gone, I've requested about. Like, it's just one of my favorite songs. I think I've got on, on Nitty's nerves a little bit, but it is just a classic record. I, I just don't understand why, do, I mean, everybody gets it. I know you all get it. Um, so I'm really excited to introduce him. I did not know this, but Nitty was born in the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, Virgin Island of St. Thomas. Um, his family moved here in 1997. He attended John Burroughs Middle School. Anybody go to Burroughs? Okay, okay, all right, see? One person over there, fantastic. All right, he also went to Riverside High School. All right, Riverside, your, your numbers are going up. I'm just saying, your numbers are going up, Riverside. Uh, that is where he found his passion for music, which evolved to poetry, which evolved from, from poetry. Two poets by the name of Kwabana Nixon and Muhib Dyer spoke words of encouragement through poetry, through their poetry. Ray began to release a lot of inner frustrations and anger through his writing. What started out as stories of his life quickly evolved into beautiful music. Ray Nitti has gained international exposure 
not only to troops, but artists in other countries as well. On, Oct on April 4th, 2009, Ray Nitty's single, Bow, was released in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the spins went from three to 20 in a matter of one week at the request of Milwaukee fans. I was probably one of them, I'm just, I'm just saying. There's so much more to Ray that the world does not know yet. Ray uh, requested to be let out of his single deal so he could pursue an indie career. Um, he has many markets supporting him, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Virginia, so many more. He will continue to tell his story through his music and strive to make his city, Milwaukee, and his birthplace, St. Thomas, proud. Give it up for Ray Nitty. I mean, do we have Bow? Hey, hey. Good evening, y'all. Make some noise for y'all sales real quick. I'll make some noise for Running Rebels, Victor Barnett, Dawn, Ward, for all of the work that they've been doing in the community. I'm going to keep this short. I just want to say thank you for, uh, for having us. I'm um, accepting this award on behalf of our team. Q. Alamine is in the background, lead developer of Scott Crawford. Uh, we're getting recognized today for our development, the community within the corridor. It's a $68 million investment on 32nd and Center Street in a building that's been vacant in our community for over 30 years. It's going to have a $118 million economical impact in the city. We bring in uh, mental health resources, once again, 197 residential units, commercial and entrepreneurial activities. Shouts out to Tia Cannon, black woman leading our construction team. Uh, Michael Wesley, who couldn't be here. Thank you to my wife for supporting the vision. Thank you to everybody that supported the vision because it's hard as black men trying to change your city and getting people to understand is something that seems impossible, but we just want to be an example that things are impossible even when people don't believe. Keep striving, keep looking to push your community forward. Shouts out to the team, Center Street, the new Black Wall Street. Bow, 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 we out of here. Give it up for Nitty. I think we need a, we need like a bow part two or something. I'm just saying, because I can listen to it every day. I'm here to tell you. Oh, that made my, that made my night. All right. How we doing? We doing good? All right. All right, our next honoree is Mr. Anthony McHenry. Shout out to Mr. Anthony McHenry, who has worked in education in the nonprofit sector to directly impact, impact the lives of young people for his entire career. Since April 2016, Anthony has served as the CEO of the Milwaukee Academy of Science, a public charter school located in the Avenues West neighborhood that serves K through four, uh, K four through 12th grade students from across the city of Milwaukee. Although over 90% of the student population is considered economically disadvantaged, one of the top funding challenges MAS faces as a charter school, Milwaukee Academy of Science has flourished under Anthony's leadership. Some of his proudest achievements include record-breaking enrollment each year since 2016, considerable growth in student and staff, staff retention, and for the last seven years in a row, 100% of MAS seniors have graduated and been accepted into post-secondary education institutions. I mean, I'm just saying. Now, I can read all of this, but I want him to come up here because I'm so proud of his work. Let's go, Mr. Anthony McHenry. Give it up, y'all. Yeah, yeah. We just gotta keep a focus, keep a focus. Everybody taking notice, yeah, they notice. Screaming Black Lives Matter, yeah, we in. It would have been nice to go before Ray Nitty, but I'll do my best. Um, 
I, I actually wasn't prepared to say anything today. Uh, I think that's because people knew that I would speak for 30, 40 minutes if I had time to prepare. So I'll be really short. Uh, I first have to start by saying um, I have to uh, give honor to God for allowing me the, the privilege and the opportunity to serve. Uh, secondly, I have to give honor uh, to my beautiful wife who also gives me uh, the opportunity and the grace to serve. And, and then finally, I have to say thank you to uh, the committee, 300 Foundation, Running Rebels, Don, Vic, uh, thank you so much for this honor. And it, it, it wouldn't be me to not come up here and just say what's really on my heart. Uh, and that is, uh, we got work to do. Uh, our children are growing up in a world that's much more challenging than the one that we grew up in. They, they don't have the privilege to, to go to the gas station or uh, to the penny store that we used to go to and not have to be worried because on 64th and Silver Spring, they were shooting up the gas station. Our children don't have the privilege of just going into the McDonald's and not being worried about the foolishness of adults because they're shooting up the McDonald's on 54th and Hampton. Our children just can't play in the streets like I used to play in the streets because they're driving 70, 80 miles per hour down the neighborhood streets. The work uh, is plenty. There's much to be done for our young people. But the final thing I would say is I'm honored to be standing here because the people that are making the difference in this community, the people that are gonna make sure that those young boys and black girls have a long, prosperous life, Many of them are in this room, starting with the Running Rebels organization. And to be with you tonight, I am honored. All right. Give it up for Anthony McHenry. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, next up, we have another amazing woman. All right, Danielle Williams of the Dream Keepers. Um, was, uh, Dream Keepers was founded in 2015. From a very young age, Danielle always dreamed of becoming a pediatrician or a teacher because of her passion of nurturing children both physically and mentally. Due to Danielle's lack of mentorship and access to resources growing up, and up her dreams seemed to be out of reach. With encouragement from her mother, she decided to pursue entrepreneurship where she went on she went on to successfully own and operate a group daycare center for six years in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Throughout her journey of pursuing entrepreneurship, she faced many struggles with finding support resources and connecting with positive like-minded women. It was through those very trials and hardships that, dang, that of being a young female entrepreneur that she realized that her calling was much, much bigger. Danielle developed a passion for helping other women entrepreneurs and young girls, um, and she started her, her foundation. Uh, she's the founder and director of Dream Keepers. She believes that happy girls are prettier, prettier, and she has made it her life's mission to help those in a sphere of influence find their positivity, happiness, strength, and inner beauty through building self-esteem and positive relationships. I love this so much. I want y'all to give it up for Danielle Williams. <laughs> First of all, I want to just say, let's give ourselves a round of applause for all of this black excellence and talent here tonight. Um, I am just so grateful to be here to accept this award and to be recognized. Shout out to all of the other honorees and awardees tonight. Um, there's a lot of more work to be done. Um, and it is my goal just to continue to strive for excellence within the community and to continue to empower our young ladies to confidently follow their dreams and just to build sisterhood amongst one another. Um, I believe that by teaching our youth early on to be examples 
um, and headstrong young ladies, um, there's no limit to what they can achieve in life. Um, so thank you guys and good night. Thank you. All right, y'all, give it up for Danielle. All right, now, we've got a couple more things, and then we're going to be wrapping up, everyone. But these are some exciting things that we're about to do, so I want you all to get ready. Um, so before I introduce this next gentleman, there is a video that should play. Good evening, my name is Victor Barnett Jr., also known as RB Vic, and I would like to congratulate Jacob Lattimore on winning the 2022 Unity Black Excellence Award. Sadly, I cannot be with you guys in person because this is day two of a play that I'm in. For those of you that don't know, I'm an aspiring artist, entertainer, and actor, and that comes in part from the inspiration that I got from Jacob Lattimore. So again, I want to thank you for being an inspiration not only to me, but the whole city of Milwaukee. So again, congratulations, and enjoy your evening. Tell me what the vibes is Choose a destination while we flying But just dip through the city somewhere private Jacob Lattimore is a superstar From his role as Emmett on The Shy Look, little man, that wasn't me To the studio as an R&B artist Come over here He's a busy man But it wasn't long ago he was grinding to get here You know, it's been good today Lattimore first took the stage at Summerfest back in 2006 at just nine years old. Hat way too big for my head. <laughs> you can literally like put your hand through the top part. A lot has changed for him since then, but his passion remains the same. It feels like this again. I remember how exciting this was, you know. Um, it feels like that again in my heart. Although he lives in Atlanta now, he always has Cream City on his mind. Do you think about how important that is for you to rep Milwaukee? Absolutely. I, I, I think about that every day. You know, I feel like Milwaukee is the the underdog, you know, when it comes to uh, entertainment coming out of this city. Are you ever wondering what's some understanding? Being in this moment wasn't how you planned it. All I ever wanted was to be with you. But it seems like if it goes the way that I wanted to. All of the shit that I've done, all that Girls are protected you from I did some damage control I was just playing the part You have been playing the role Cause I never would have thought You would have secrets of your own oh. What if you been out here Like I've been out here Would I lose my mind or Be cool about it What if it were mutual yeah. yeah, all right. I want you to give it up for Jacob Lattimore. What's up, what's up, y'all? Man, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say, but uh, I just want to thank um, Ward. I want to thank Unity MKE for, uh, for just recognizing my hard work and um, just, uh, just grooming me. You know, uh, grooming me, the city just groomed me to uh, be who I am today, be as humble as I am today. No matter where I go, no matter where I'm at in the world, I'm like, I'm from Milwaukee. You know, they were like, I ain't never met nobody from Milwaukee before. I'm like, well, it's first time for everything. So uh, um, I'm just happy to, to let people know that this city has talent, this city has something to give, and, um, and more than just music, but just community leaders and just uh, uh, great influences. And um, it's, we, we, we see our city on the news a lot, but there's just so many great things here. And I'm just super grateful to be here, be back home celebrating my birthday with, with family. And, um, and just, thank, just thank everybody just for supporting me. And um, I'm just happy to, to, to be back and uh, give, that, give that love back. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Thank you to my mom, my mom back there, uh, just for believing in me. Um, 
Uh, shout out to my, my pops. My pops can be here. He, he back home in Atlanta with my little sister right now. Um, so uh, I love him. He, he couldn't be here today, but he, 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 he probably crying on the phone or something like that. <laughs> I couldn't be here, dog. But uh, uh, just thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, Milwaukee. I appreciate y'all, and I love y'all, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. All right. Give it up for Jacob Lattimore one more time. I want to tell you all something funny about Jacob. I've known Jacob since he was two, three years old. And he's just a different type of person. I, I try not to call him a kid because he's an adult now. And he wants me to put some respect on his name as an adult because <laughs> he's like little Jake to me forever. Um, but let me tell you how I knew he was special. Literally go to visit his mom, who's my best friend. I'm at their house. I'm like, where's Jacob? She's like, oh, he's in his room. I go in his room. Jacob, I kid you not, has his Bible on his bed. It's like, so he's like reading the Bible, but then he's got the vacuum, and he's like vacuuming. And I was like, what, what are you doing? He said, I'm just trying to clean, and I'm in my word. And I was, he literally was like seven. And I'm like, what? Like, this is what he was doing at seven years old. Um, and so it's, it's been in him. He's disciplined. He's committed. He is destined for great. He was destined, destined for greatness a long time ago. So to see the things that he's doing, 15 movies, y'all, 15 movies, uh, seven <laughs> television shows, four albums, like, and he, sh he is 26 years old, 26 years old. And what he did not mention is that on Wednesday, he was given a proclamation from the city of Milwaukee. August 10th is Jacob Lattimore Day in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That is just, that is really special. I'm just beyond proud of him. We all are so proud of him. He does the work. He's humble. His heart is gold. And he just wants to rep for his city. And he does a spectacular job of that. So. So proud of Jacob. Now, we have a video and somebody else really special um, to introduce to you next. And there's also a guy who's going to come and personally introduce him, who I didn't get to acknowledge in the beginning, but I want to just give him a shout out. He does not like attention, so he's probably mad right now, but I don't even care. I want you all to give it up for Ward. Ward is just the best, the best person ever. Um, he works hard. He's dedicated, I've known him for 20 plus years, and he literally has had the same energy, the same entrepreneurial mind. He's a hard worker, he's dedicated to the city. He does just the most phenomenal work, um, you know, and I think, you know, when you, when you see Running Rebels and you see all the work, he's, he's a part of that, and he's just doing an extraordinary job along with Vic and, and Dawn and, and so many others, but I wanna shout him out, and he's gonna come up and introduce our next special guest, but we gotta give folks their flowers, and Ward, you deserve all of them. So show the video, and then the next voice you will hear will be that voice of Ward. Yeah. I love my friends that yeah. here. When I was hurt, out, they was always there for me. I love them and thank them for everything they do. Yeah. We're three time champions now. Yeah. right here. That's how you do it. Rooney! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bullock. Yeah, yeah. Rooney. Yeah, yeah. Quarter and back to Rooney. I walk out like a champion. Took it off, now I'm back again. And I'm focused on my bag again. They want the drip, so I'm taxing them. And then I walk out like a champion. Took it off, now I'm back again. And I'm focused on my bag again. They want the drip, so I'm taxing them. Yeah, he look. I come with the drip, but the way I do it, it is so different yeah, yeah. Running it up, thumb through a check until my fingers blistering yeah. Took me a break, but now I'm back, I had to pick up the pen again yeah, yeah. Now it is raps for all of these rappers, who stay speaking that gibberish That's fast, I'm taking off, get to the bag, then I stack in the vault You think I'm a chef, how I'm dripping the sauce? I think I'm the best, so I flex like a boss Yeah, yeah, I grind for the gang, we setting trends, yeah, we making change Yeah, yeah, I grind with the gang, the way we drip, you might drown on the wings 
I missed the welcome earlier, and um, I wasn't able to do the welcome. I had a wardrobe malfunction, but I'm here now, and I just want to tell you a, a little bit about why I wanted to do this. Um, um, I have I moved to I move around a lot, but I, I've recently been in um, Louisiana for the last year, and I tell them a lot about Milwaukee, and. Uh, and then recently, I've been telling them about Milwaukee. And last year, they wanted to come to Milwaukee. They were like, I want to come, I want to come, I want to come. And then they said, recently, I've been scaring them with the things that I've been saying about Milwaukee. So I was like, wow, why, why y'all saying that? And they said, well, you said this happened, you said this happened, you said this happened. And I had to catch myself. You know, we, we talk about the negative so much, we don't focus on the positive. And there's so many people doing so much positive things in Milwaukee. And then with the death, man, like it's so much death around us now. I just really want to give people their flowers. Like I want to give people their flowers while they're here. So that's why I decided to, I came up with this and I brought it to Vic and, and he was ecstatic about it. And we just took it from there and we made this thing happen. And to have this much greatness in one room is amazing. Um, second part of that is when I started telling people who I wanted to give awards to, um, I said, yeah, we're going to give Looney an award, we're going to give Jacob an award. And I was talking to some people, and they said, well, 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 what do they do in the community? And I said, people don't understand that it's different lanes for everybody. Just by them making it and showing these kids that they can make it, they did their part. <laughs> it's other people that do the other work. And I don't think that we understand that so much, you know. I think, like... Um, um, a conversation I was having not too far, long ago, I told somebody, um, like, I felt like my God purpose was to help children and help kids or whatever. And it's like, they was kind of puzzled about it. And I said, people are anointed to do different things. Everybody not supposed to be a preacher. See, Vic was anointed to help the kids in the streets. You get what I'm saying? Vaughn is anointed to help the activists. People have their own lanes, and they have to be great in their own lanes. Everybody can't do what everyone else does. But we need to start respecting it, understanding it, and working together. That's the most important part of everything. So when you do your part, your part might be that I donated money. Your part might be I donated time. Your part might be I prayed at night. You get what I'm saying? Everybody has their own piece of this situation that to make it get better, we're all going to have to do our part. All going to have to do our part. And nobody has to come down and run the rebels and help the kids. We got that already. But make sure that y'all get the kids there. Somebody get the kids a ride. Somebody get the kids a scholarship after we done helping them. So that's what my welcome was going to be. So y'all got the welcome part. And now... Um, <laughs> Now I'm going to bring up this guy, and um, I hate talking about him because, man, he's so special to me, and I, I'm always going to get real emotional talking about him. The best thing about Kevon Looney, as I can say, is if there's an NBA for people, he would be in that NBA also. He is a great person. He's a good basketball player, but he's a great person. I'm talking a great person. I've been with this person for year after year, and I have not found a flaw. He's been, as everyone says, 100 every time. Every time. And to tell somebody, whoever asked me, what does he do for the community, he only spends probably seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 on sending kids to play basketball every year, who does a camp, who gives whatever the running rebels need, who gives his time. And any time I ask him to do something, whether someone died, we need to pay for a funeral, or we need to send flowers, it's not, it's not reached with another question. It's go ahead. It's go ahead. Oh, that? That's cool. That's cool. How much is it? Okay, go ahead. It's never been a no. So I applaud him. I salute him. And his greatness is so much more. Like I said, basketball is just going to be one chapter for him. And he's going to have so much more greatness to come. So I, we salute him on the basketball court, but I salute him as a person more than anything in the world. So, Kevon Looney, come up here, please.
Yeah, yeah. We just gotta keep a focus, keep a focus. Everybody taking notice, yeah, they notice. Screaming Black Lives Matter, yeah, we in. Uh, well, it's time to think about what I was gonna say all night. Uh, first, I wanna say thank y'all for, for coming up, coming and showing out. Uh, thank you, Front of Rebels, 300 Strong, uh, Milwaukee Unity, for putting us on this event. Uh, I thank my parents, they couldn't make it, but uh, thank them for raising me and uh, putting me in the right situations and you know, allowing me to meet different people and, and, and be taught by others. You know, it takes a lot of you know, trust to put your kid in another person's hands and they allow me to go to the Runner Rebels every day. They allow uh, Ward, Shell, uh, drive me all across the country to do something that I love. So I want to give a special thanks to them. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's been a a long journey for me to get to where I'm at today, and I feel like it's so many people I could thank, it's so many different people that I came across. And uh, so every time I go out you know, across the country, I feel like I, I represent Milwaukee, and I try to do it to the best of my ability. Uh, you know, I get, get, get <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm in the locker room every day, you know, arguing with people about how great uh, Milwaukee is, and, and they, everybody got their own two cents about Milwaukee, and I always tell them it's, it's a lot of talent here. It's a lot of special people here, and to be in this room and see all the talent and all the special people all together at one time it just makes me so happy and so, uh, you know, I feel so blessed to be here to talk to you guys. Now, I really try to, like, I really argue for you guys when I'm out there on, on the road and I try to represent you. And, uh, you, know, you know, it's nothing like getting the love from, from your hometown. So getting this award means so much to me. You know, I, I get to go out there and play in front of fans, 20,000 people all the time. But to be in this room right now, getting this award is probably one of the, the most special things for me, you know, you guys, you know, a lot of these guys, people in here saw me since I was six, seven years old, and, and they helped me get to me where I am today. So uh, I want to say I love you guys. I'm going to keep trying to represent you to the best of my ability. You know, shout out to Vic for putting this on, and he done changed so many people's lives, and Ward, Shell, and all the, got my, my brothers here, my, my girlfriend Ryan for supporting me, and, uh, you know, I couldn't do it without you guys. So I'm going to continue to go out here and, and, and do a lot more work. It's a lot more to do, but I want you guys to be, you know, proud that you are from this city. You know, sometimes when I come back, I feel like, you know, people are like, they're not, they, they talk down about Milwaukee uh, here, you know, and I'm in Oakland. They love Oakland so much, and I'm like, Milwaukee's better than this. I don't know why. Why they feel so proud about it, but, but, I, so I'm, I just want you guys to have that same Milwaukee pride everywhere you go, you know. You know, we got our struggles, we got our things we need to work on, but you should be proud to be from Milwaukee, and, you know, uh, we got a lot of special people, a lot of special talent, and I want you guys to spread that, spread that talent, and uh, spread that love, and cause I feel like that's what got me here, and uh, I want you all to continue to do that for the next generation, and we can make much more stars and much better people, so thank you, and I love you guys. All right, so want to do something really special, and it's a bit of a surprise, so I want to bring Jacob Lattimore back up, please. Jacob Lattimore, come back down. Thank you. And yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna all sing a solo. Um, I'm just kidding. You don't want to hear that. Well, you do. You may want to hear Jacob, but not me. Um, Looney, can you sing? Okay, okay. You don't want to hear Looney sing either. All right, just Jacob. All right. So we have a surprise. Um, and uh, the uh, surprise recipient does not know about this. And so I'm going to turn it over to these gentlemen who are going to present uh, the special recipient with his award. Right. Well, this award goes to uh, a man that's done so much in this community, uh, a person that shows that uh, one man with a vision and determination and drive can know, change the course of uh, thousands and thousands of young kids' lives, uh, young men's lives, and, and make a big difference in the, in the community. And uh, he's a legend. He's a big, somebody that I've been knowing since I was six or seven years old. He's a pillar in the community. I don't know what Milwaukee would be without him. So I just want to give a lot of love. To, I'm so happy to present this award to my man, Victor Barnett. I'm a wear 
proud. If you're standing in the path, we gon' burn it down. I ain't taking nothing else. I can breathe now. I got 300 behind me and we screaming. Wow, this is deep. This is really deep. Earlier, somebody uh, said to me, uh, black excellence. And when I looked around the room, I mean, I was like, wow, that is it. Uh, people that have done some serious, serious things is in this room. Please give them a hand. Please give them a hand. And, and, and this is just the beginning of it. That, that's what's so special about what's about to happen. I talked to somebody else earlier. I've, I've been doing a little talking in the corner, but um, I think that Milwaukee, as Loon just said, has some tremendous talent, people in it, and uh, that negativity that comes up has been rising a lot higher than it should. I think if we realize, and I was a little disappointed in some people that know me, I'm always trying to straighten things out, but some of the things that were said about some of the people that came up here and in the back, or some of the people might have missed it and didn't pay attention to it, it's amazing. If we was in other cities and you say that this person did this, this person did this, this person did, then you take this many of them and put them in the same room along with some people that, again, if they were in other cities, what these two gentlemen have done, right? It's like second to none almost, not to disrespect nobody else, but what's starting to happen in our city if we realize it and start working together and start coming together, some amazing things are going to happen. I, I have always, for 42, I think 42, 42 years, have been dedicated to the same thing I felt in 1980 is the same thing I felt now. I'm going to take as many young people as I can. I'm going to take them under my wing. At the time, we had a, 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 those that know Milwaukee, it was called the Monkey Trail, right? And on this side was the basketball court, and on the other side was some brothers. I loved them. I'm not going to put them down, but they was involved in things that maybe they shouldn't have been involved in, right? So I gave them all I can to get as many as I could to go from that side to the other side. I think we did okay that first year. 50 young men were with me, and that next summer, they told some other people, we had 100 and something. Can you imagine a 20-year-old brother with 100 and something brothers talking about they want to do this rather than be on the other side, right? So in 1980, that was the beginning of what I was doing, taking those young people. That work, I am honored to talk about connecting that work to some of the people that was in this room. And when you talk about business, Black Wall Street, we done heard of it. Uh, there's other people that have done some amazing things by coming together. When you take entertainment, you take sports, you take business, you take young people, you take the most successful people in a room like this, put that together, can you imagine what we'll have if we have as many as possible of you guys in this room stay connected to this movement? Can you imagine that? Then next year we get some more brothers and sisters that's doing the same thing in our city. Do that math and after a couple of years, what will we have? If we don't, we may not call it Black Wall Street. We're going to call it whatever we want to call it. But it's going to be a whole bunch of success going on in Milwaukee. And now our young people got some for real stuff to look up to. I'm excited about where we're about to go. That negativity of Milwaukee is this and Milwaukee is that, that's behind us. We ain't going to do it no more. So when somebody on that, please be the person to say, you know what? That ain't where we at right now because we got something special we're about to do. I'm grateful, I'm thankful, 19 to 62 years old, I'm really ready to continue this work and work with everybody in this room. So as they say, let's go. Let's go. All right, let's get some photos. Give it up again, y'all, for Vic. Vic and Barnett. Dawn Barnett. Yeah. We just gotta keep a focus, keep a focus. Everybody taking notice, yeah, they notice. Screaming Black Lives Matter, yeah, we in now. We united, standing tall, we ain't falling down. Yeah, you see this black skin, I'm a wear proud. If you're standing in the path, we gon' burn it down. I ain't taking nothing else, I can breathe now. I got 300 behind me, and we screaming now. We screaming out, oh yeah. I 
I just want to thank you for allowing me to come back to a city I love and to host this event for you. It has been my privilege, my pleasure, and my honor to do this. I want to thank Ward for allowing me this opportunity. He, he listen, my, 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 my best friend Tish was like, you should, you should host this award, this, this award ceremony. And, and Ward just listened to her and made it happen. And I hope that I made you proud. Um, and I hope that I did this event justice because this is special to me. This city is special to me. And listen up. Thank you. And I want to see this event continue. Every single year, as long as it can possibly continue, the things that the Running Rebels are doing in this community, 300 strong, it has to be acknowledged, it has to be praised, it has to be recognized. If we're gonna talk about anything negative that's happening, we must talk about the positive three times more, right? That's the only way things will get better. We can do this, we will do this, and it starts with each and every one of you. So congratulations to the amazing honorees tonight. You all deserve it. Thank you. Um, thank you to the amazing band who's gonna play in a second. Thank you to the amazing DJ J.A., right? Um, and here's what I wanna tell you. Uh, this establishment, is awesome. Look around at this beautiful facility. I want to shout out Craig and Frenchie and the owners of this establishment. This is not ending right now. This is turning into a party and they are welcoming you to stay, to dance, to drink, to eat. They want you to stick around. And so there's after the show, it's the what? After party. So we want to get this thing going. So thank you to each and every one of you. Happy birthday again, Victor Barnett. Andre Lee Ellis, and let's have a party, y'all. Peace.